Hey guys, my name is Cameron Dole, and I want to thank you for checking out the podcast, Good Questions with Cameron Dole. We have artists, we have actors, we have authors, we have local people, politicians, all going to be joining with us. And in case you miss it on the Cameron Dole experience, you can tune it in right here on Good Questions with Cameron Dole, the podcast. Find it anywhere you download your podcast. We're going to share one of our interviews with one of our good friends, Meathead Goldwyn, talking about some August grilling on our first podcast episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Every month we get to visit with uh, with the one and the only, the best when it comes to to, to grilling and, and the science around that. And uh, we like to call him our good friend as well, Meathead Goldwyn. And uh, Meathead, happy August to you, my friend. Oh, yeah. What a great summer for grilling <laughs> with all the restaurants closed. Man, you know, we're seeing um, all the culinary websites I know of are seeing a huge uptick in activity because people are stuck at home. They're learning how to cook. That's right, and uh, and that's one of the things we talk about every month is uh, is different grill ideas, and uh, especially being timely with uh, with that. And uh, this is this is corn season. It is it is. Uh, oh boy! It, it th- now this is this is one of those things that I've never tried on a grill, Meathead. Oh no, really? Never have. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, you know, a couple of things are going on in the corn world. Um, there are a whole bunch of new hybrids. Now, these are not GMOs if you're spooked by GMOs. They're just crossbreeding. They take the, 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 the pollen from one and pollinate the other, just like you're a crossbreed, your mom and dad. Never mind. Um, <laughs> in any case, there's a whole bunch. And one of the things that these new corns do, you know, used to say you go out and you start the water boiling, then you pick the corn. Um, and you bring it home right away because the um, enzymes in the corn would deteriorate the uh, uh, carbohydrates rapidly and they would lose sweetness. The new ones don't have those enzymes or they um, are they resistant to the enzymes and they stay sweet much longer in the fridge. So that's cool. Um, so you might want to ask for, uh, there's one called Mirai. I don't know if it's out there by you, but I am in love with the Mirai variety. But corn is really good on the grill because what happens is, is the sugars caramelize. So you get a slightly different sweetness profile when you caramelize the sugars rather than when you boil it. When you boil or simmer or steam corn, it doesn't get any hotter than 212 degrees. But if you roll it around on a hot grill, it's much hotter than that, and it changes the chemistry of the sugars. And so you get brown splotches. You don't want black splotches, but you get brown splotches, which is essentially a type of caramel. Um, And uh, uh, it's really quite wonderful. Now, I know a lot of people like to take the corn and grill it in the husk, but what happens then is you're really just steaming it because the husk right. has water and moisture in it, and you don't get quite the same level of caramelization. So I recommend you peel the husk, wash it down. If you want, you can paint it with an oil and then roll it around on the grill until it starts to turn tan or brown, and you're going to experience a very different corn. It's a little chewier than when you steam it or boil it, um, but it's much more flavorful, I think. Now, now, whenever you do that, do you, do you want to boil it ahead of time, or you just want to throw it straight on the no. grill? No, I throw it right on the grill. It takes a little longer. Um, if you want to parboil it, you can. It'll speed up the process. It'll make it a little tent more tender, but um, I don't find it necessary. Now, there's a trick that I use that's kind of cool. Um, I'll take a little olive oil and a little butter, about one-to-one ratio, And um, we have an herb garden. I'll go out to the herb garden and I'll pick some tarragon or whatever is fresh out there and and toss it in a pot with that oil and just let it simmer for a bit so that the oil extracts the tarragon flavor. And I'll paint the corn with that while it's grilling. It helps speed the grilling. It all drips off, almost all of it, but it leaves behind the tarragon flavor. It doesn't make it really fatty or, you know, um, high caloric. but it really adds an interesting flavor. Tarragon, I think, goes really great with corn and eggs also. So that's a, that's a fun technique. Now, what, uh, what, whenever you're doing the, grill, the corn on the grill, what is, uh, what is the favorite thing that you want to put right next to it on the grill? Oh, boy. You know, well, I mean, I'll tell you something I just had uh, the other day. 
you, you always stole me for a loop in, uh, for a second, but it, it, it just clicked. <laughs> Beef. Um, I just, I love flank steaks. Um, they're much less expensive than ribeyes and sirloin, and, and they're tougher. They're a tougher cut. There's not a lot of fat in there, but it's a hard-working muscle, and it has a lot of flavor because of that. And they cook really fast because they're only about an inch thick. And I, most steak, we've talked about this before, if you've got a thick steak, you need to slowly warm the interior and then sear the exterior over really high heat. It's a two-step process. But with um, a flank steak, you just got to give it all she's got, Scotty. And, and I, I, I have some wild grapevines on my property, and I prune them every winter, and I save the prunings. And you can do the same thing with any hardwood or nutwood or fruitwood. They're the pruning, the branches. Save them, let them dry out, and then I just stuff my Weber kettle full of these things, light them from below, and you get an eight-foot flame. <laughs> now, you, you want to stand back because if, if you lose your eyebrows, but it, in about five minutes, that flame dies down, and you have just these glowing embers, and you're going to have about 15 minutes to cook, and then the embers will die out. And in that 15 minutes, it's enough to do a flank steak, and you get this wonderful flavor that comes from strong infrared radiation, which is what you need to sear a steak perfectly, and you also get the smoke flavor of the grapevines or the hardwood or whatever you use. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to make a video of it. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but it's, 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 the whole process takes like 20 minutes, and it's just whoosh. <laughs> I mean, for those of us guys who like to play with fire, this is the ultimate fire. <laughs> And uh, what, now we talked corn. We've talked uh, that that flank steak. I think another one of those ideas uh, that, that it's been a while since we talked about it. I, I, I thought it'd be great to kind of rehash, if you will, the the beer can chicken. I know this is uh, this is hugely popular. Oh, and yeah. uh, it, like I said, it's been a minute since we talked. Well, all right, everybody who really hates what I'm about to say, send your email to Cameron, not me. <laughs> Actually, beer can chicken's wonderful because it's. Roast chicken, and everybody loves roast chicken. But the beer can has nothing to do with it, other than it looks cool. I mean, that chicken sitting on the beer can with its legs crossed or something. Hey, you can put the wing behind its head. You know, it looks, it looks like a little Buddha. It's cool. But it, the beer can't boil. Um, it doesn't get hot enough. Now, we've tested this with all kinds of thermometers and probes. Beer is like 90% water, and it doesn't boil to 212 degrees. There is no way it's going to heat up to 212 degrees. Your chicken is done when it's 160 to 165. If you take your chicken up to 212, you're going to have one black piece of charcoal. Um, so there's just no way the, the, the beer can boil. And what happens is, is it, it can't, even if it could boil, there's no way for it to enter the muscle of the chicken. The chicken is saturated. It's like a sponge that's full of water. It's got it's it's seventy percent water. It can't absorb any more water, any more moisture. The beer cannot get into the bird. And even if it could, there's no way it could travel. There's no interstate highways in those muscles of the animal. It can't get anywhere uh, throughout. And to make matters worse, what happens is is fat from the bird drips into the beer can and lays on top of the beer because fat and water don't mix. And so th there's just a... The, the can itself blocks any moisture from getting into the bird, and it also prevents the interior from browning. And brown is something called the Maillard reaction. Brown is beautiful. Brown is flavor. If you want maximum flavor on your chicken, cut it up into individual pieces, six or eight pieces, and brown all sides. It'll cook much faster, which means less moisture loss, and it doesn't look as cool, but it's just as good or better than beer can chicken. There you go. And, of course, for that and uh, so many other recipes, uh, grill recommendations, uh, Meathead, they can always check out the website for more information uh, and uh, get in on the, uh, on the newsletter as well. Amazingribs.com is just a great resource. And also, 
I have a book called Meathead that uh, they might want to check out. That's right. Uh, if they haven't checked it out, they have missed out. That's for sure. <laughs> well, Meathead, always good to visit with you, my friend. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your August and uh, look forward to, to, to more grilling tips next month. Same to you, and uh, stay hydrated. It's hot down there, isn't it? <laughs> Very hot. It's, <laughs> it's southwest Oklahoma, my friend. <laughs> Go have a beer. Thanks for tuning us in on Good Questions with Cameron Dole podcast. You find it anywhere you find podcasts. If you ever have a question, maybe a guest that you'd like to uh, bring forward to us, you can send me an email, Cameron at KWHW.com. You can also hit me up on Facebook.com forward slash Cameron Dole Altus. Also on Twitter at Cameron Dole and on Instagram at AKA underscore Cameron.